Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and you're very warm. Welcome to Friday Fretworks, and this week, the best and worst thing ever to happen to the world of guitar. Don't glitch like that. Rewind to December of 2019, four years ago actually, and the guitar world's little corner of the internet was ablaze with accusation over Manuel Gardner Fernandez, with Jared Dines' claim that hands don't glitch like that spearheading the discussion of whether the German guitarist was in fact speeding up or faking his videos. Now, ultimately, the beef was set aside, Jared apologizing, and Manuel issuing a statement vehemently denying speeding up or faking his videos, but conceding that he did occasionally pre-record or edit his videos for that extra 2% of perfection, a concept which has actually gone on to form part of a study written by Jan-Peter Herbst and Alexander Paul Vallejo and published by the University Cambridge Press, which posits that guitarists appear to be caught in a paradox. They cannot merely publish a spontaneously produced, seemingly authentic video of their playing, yet neither can they afford to release anything less than perfect. If performances are perfect, guitarists must prove their authenticity or be accused of cheating. In short, if it's not perfect, you're not good enough. But if it's perfect, you're too good. The curse of the modern day musician and, crucially, social media. Now, admittedly, this new study is primarily interested in the genre of progressive rock, where it concedes that virtuosity seems to be a constant requirement, also for those who do not explicitly seek it, and where success is inevitably tied to technical ability. But the notion of something having to be perfect before it's uploaded to social media is far from unique to progressive rock. As someone who dabbles in content creation themselves, I would be lying that however immune I may try to appear to the notion or the demand that something has to be perfect before it's uploaded, it is an inescapable pressure, and I've been entirely guilty of obsessing over minor slips or idiosyncrasies in YouTube videos, which, if it was in a live context or even a studio recording, I probably wouldn't have even noticed. However, when you sit down in front of a camera that invariably you've set up yourself and then press record, it is an entirely different set of circumstances and an entirely different set of pressures and expectations that you put on yourself. And it's all born of that demand or that desire to be successful or to be accepted on social media. Social media, like it or lump it, is integral to being a musician in the 21st century, irrespective of whether you're an up-and-comer or an already well-established musician. And if you're a musician whose only outlet, or whose only kind of major outlet, is on social media, then that pressure or that demand for the perfect take is absolutely unrelenting. Now, I'm not going to sit here and disparage or denigrate social media. Ultimately, I'm sat here talking to you through YouTube, a social media platform. And I also post regularly on Instagram and Facebook and use it as a tool to reach new people and as a marketing tool for the band even. But I'd be lying if I said anything other than I've always had a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it, primarily for the demands that it places upon my time, time that could otherwise be spent 
doing things like, I don't know, maybe actually playing guitar. Imagine that. But as this new study highlights, for a virtuoso, working situations have changed considerably since the last century. The aloof rock star has been replaced by the approachable virtuoso guitarist, composer, innovator, producer, promoter, YouTuber, teacher, entrepreneur. That is a lot of hats to wear, especially for someone who, like myself, started playing guitar because I just wanted to play guitar. Now, of course, when anyone's hobby turns into their job, there will, of course, be expectations or roles associated with that job that maybe you've not anticipated or that you probably wouldn't want to engage with in a perfect world, but arguably more so than most other professions in this day and age, being a modern-day musician does require an unprecedented level of skill sets. Content creation, social media management, video editing, production, web design, branding, merch design, teaching, marketing, photography, photo editing, e-commerce, customer services, etc, etc. My average week entails all of these to some extent, and that's not to mention actually finding time to play guitar or maybe go on tour. Again, as this new study highlights, what was once delegated to labels, managers or other support staff is now carried out by artists themselves. They have become cultural entrepreneurs. But that's not to say that that's wholly a bad thing. Now, I've talked about this at length, ad nauseum probably, in videos in years gone by, but having at least a cursory understanding of as many facets of this industry, or your chosen industry, whatever it happens to be, this advice applies across the board, it's going to massively minimise the risk of you being taken for a ride or being taken advantage of. Musician screwed by label, musician screwed by management, musician screwed by accountant. These are all tales and invariably headlines as old as time, and the one common denominator tends to be someone delegating a task that maybe they don't want to do or they don't know how to do to someone that ultimately they've probably placed too much faith into. To use my band card in the black as an example, from the outset of the band we agreed that anyone external that was brought into the fold, beyond reasonable doubt, we had to know were entirely trustworthy and had to bring something real and something tangible to the band before they were brought into the fold. Anything else from more creative endeavours to anything more practical like tour management is done entirely in-house. Yes, it is an insane amount more work than it probably would be otherwise, but it allows the, the revenue that we do generate as a band to be brought back into or to be kept in the band and to be reinvested. And also then as a consequence, when we do field offers from third parties, whether it's labels, agencies, promoters, management, whatever... We are that much more well-versed in what these decisions will likely have as an impact on the band, both collectively and individually. At the end of the day, you can't be too well-versed in your profession, especially when so many of its demands and expectations fall squarely upon your shoulders, even more so as a modern-day musician. Ultimately, nobody cares about your career as much as you do. Now, in all honesty, I would be lying if I said that I didn't have reservations or severely mixed feelings, to put it somewhat more strongly, about social media. On the one hand, I love the connection that it gives me to people that enjoy what I do, or those who find me on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram and then seek me out and maybe come and catch a show. That is social media very much as a force for good. But the flip side of that is that the, the pressure of generating regular content 
can be something of a burden, especially when it's in addition to all of the other expectations of the job that seemingly still exists to give you some level of credibility as a musician, like being in a touring band. That said, my choosing to produce social media content is and has and always will be solely my decision. And no doubt any kind of reputation that I may have as a musician is largely in part thanks to social media and the reach that I've enjoyed. It's very much taken the power away from the industry's gatekeepers in that respect and given it back into the hands of the artists. I choose what content I create. I choose when I release that content. And how far that content goes is principally down to how good I can make it and not down to some arbitrary third party and how much they want to push it. However, juggling the demands of real life and social media can be difficult and you probably will have noticed that when I'm away touring with Cardinal Black I will occasionally miss an episode of Friday Frightworks simply because there aren't enough hours in the day. Inevitably this angers the algorithm which sees my views and my income drop on YouTube but also all of my other kind of revenue sources which are inextricably linked to social media, tabs, presets, backing tracks etc etc. I guess one obvious answer would be to simply not tour and just generate online content but that would be to deny myself the thing which gets me up in the morning playing guitar in front of people where it's real and it's live and it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be if anything it's more entertaining when it's not social media and the real world are two very different things two very different places and as long as we don't lose sight of that i genuinely believe the two can coexist peacefully after all perfect is the enemy of good as ever, I'm Chris Buck. This is Friday Fret Works. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe at the bell icon if you haven't already. And I shall see you next week for another episode. Cheers, guys. Take care. Merry Christmas.